And that was indeed very quick as we are again back for top four of this beautiful tournament. And as you can see, it is still our man. It is still Joshua Schmidt left in competition. This man really doesn't shy away from trying to win his own tournament here today. What a madman. I mean, it's not his tournament, right? He's just promoting it, right? I mean, it's part... he's not organizing it, but he's still very much part of the tournament. He's the face of the tournament, basically, because it was advertised with his face, pretty much. But, yeah, we see um, Joshua Schmidt with his deck that we had on stream multiple times now already versus something that appears to be Frog Hero by Thomas. So, that is... As I uh, was about to tell you, the second most represented deck overall in the tournament. And it's also one of the decks in top four. And there is the... Wow! Caius Tribute Summon Sangin getting rid of a Treeborn Frog. That's so strong for him. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is absolutely insane. Puts him in the driver's seat immediately. And that's that's why like the Swap Frog Send Treeborn Frog start is... Uh much more popular under the Frog Monarch players because it's, you can, of course, Ooh, best protect track Godia coming more. down. That is very good for Thomas now, though, because he will have enough cards in hand to, in theory, run over the Chaos. Yeah, or just take it because he's running a lot of level 6 monsters as well. Uh, Schneebo, I can't tell you what the names of the two other players are, but one of them for sure is our Christian Storm player that we just had on feature in, in top 8. And the other one is our Flame Will player. And I would love to see that Flame Will deck as well. I mean, we're guaranteed to have some really spicy decks in the yeah. finals. I mean, already top 4 is super spicy because there's no Quick Draw Synchro, there's no Vayu Turbo, there's no Blackwing? What's, what's going on here? That is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, all those Blackwings and Turbos have been eliminated quite quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I mean, it had the highest participation rate, but it's also one of those decks where, you know, everyone is just going, so many players are just going to pick it up without really testing for the event. Yep, agree. So some insider knowledge in chat as well. So apparently the Flame Wall player is Julian Sand. Maybe we're going to see more of him later on in the finals. Ooh. So, that card trooper can't get rid of the Tragodia. Oh, I think... What's that? That's Substitute in his hand, right? That looked like Substitute to me. But first yep. of all, yeah. that's a lot of damage that's potentially being dealt here by running over the card trooper. Oh boy, that is dropping down Joshua significantly. But I mean, as a consolation prize, he does draw a card via the effect of... Card Trooper, and now his draw for turn is the also powerful Future Fusion, which we have seen resolving so many times already today, but it's probably going to be one more time here. Yeah, now we are talking. This is the card that he actually wanted to see for a longer time. Now, we don't know the follow-up in his hand, to be honest. I think it kind of looks like he's having a Gemini Spark in hand as well, but I doubt that he's running it. it might just be Miracle Fusion. I saw a pot of Everest. But first of all, it's going to be the Future Fusion. And I mean, hmm, he's on 4200. And the Tragodia is big. And correct me if I'm wrong, but he can't normal summon this turn, right? But there, And there's also Miracle Fusion. Uh, there's Miracle Fusion on the hand. That, that's a pretty good card to activate here, yeah. I guess. Oh, but there's oh. also Chaos Sorcerer. Oh, boy. Chaos Sorcerer also is a pretty good answer, not gonna lie. Uh, Katamantolaitis, I'm pretty sure Josh is going to share his list. He's going to be sharing yeah. his list out of the tournament, so just make sure to keep an eye on either one of his streams or his YouTube channel, and you will be able to see the list 100% certainly. I think we can be, yeah. Absolutely sure about this. So That's true. But looks like Looks like we were wrong, right? Because he set a monster after activating Future Fusion, right? Yeah, it, it, you can summon after this card. Ah, I see. Okay. The, the card that in question earlier was uh, Hidden Armory. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, there is the Soul Exchange over the Chaos Sorcerer. What are we going after here with the 
chaos. We want to get rid okay. of the future fusion. Okay. I find that kind of interesting because we are having uh, we we have dealt so much damage already. Now I just realized that soul exchange was activated. True. We can't attack here. We cannot attack. That's true. <laughs> no battle phaseo. Oh, and there is Pot of Everest, and it feels even better to activate Pot of Everest on a Pot of Greed, mate, uh, Matt. <laughs> that is so powerful. Also, good catch by Ellen Boys in chat. Uh, look at those play mats. Ash Blossom countering the Pot of Greed <laughs> with the mat, but that Pot of Everest here cannot be countered by anything, and therefore Joshua is picking up two more cards, and I think this was another Pot of Everest that he picked up there. Another Only a tree born frog remaining in the graveyard. I mean, at least he could keep that. Oh, and there is the Raiko milling Cyber Valley Dandelion and Ooh. Gorse. Wow, milling that Dandelion is huge. There aren't that many cards that are valuable to mill for Joshua, but Dandelion certainly is one of them. The reason why you're playing so many milling cards, in this case, it could have also been like a really good hit to have a hero uh, because of the Miracle Fusion. Oh, nice. Dandelion was insane! It was indeed. It was very much so. There is Dual Warrior, and I think this is one of the favorite cards by Joshua Schmidt, because whenever yeah. I saw him play Time Wizard uh, 2010 format, it felt like every single time he had Drill Warrior on the board. I'm, I'm yeah. not capping, like every single time. It's like he starts with this card on the field, basically. I, I, I was gonna say, uh, every monster mill is really important in a deck where you play Trip Pot of Everest. I mean, Pot of Everest is the heart and soul of the deck. And now he has Dandelion in the graveyard. He has the Drill Warrior engine. The Frog Monarch deck is not the best deck in terms of uh, getting rid of small monsters or removing a Drill Warrior. So this is going to be really difficult for Thomas now to get back out of this because Drill Warrior is just going to poke every time, gain some more value, add back Dandelion, discard itself, banish itself, get two more tokens... And Thomas is going to have to find a way to, to, to win this through it. I mean, one way is to turn a token into attack position and then attack over it with a Monarch for 2,400 damage. But unfortunately, it is the other way around. Joshua is having 4,200 life points. Yep, that is true. So, he's so far ahead in resources here already. Look, Drill Warrior just casually adding back that Dandelion to hand. <laughs> Drill Warrior, honestly, one of the coolest cards in... Right, Geki Break on the Drill Warrior. But still, there's so many cards in Joshua's hand. And there is Pot of Everest again! Oh boy. We are going off here. We are going in, we are taking off, and we are sailing away in terms of card advantage by a long, 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 long mile. Resolving multiple pot of avarices in a game is incredibly powerful. We get the Chaos Sorcerer back. We have added the Dandelion back and we have drawn the Quick Draw Synchron again. We just special summon it out. Get two of the tokens and guess what we're having on the field again? Drill Warrior. <laughs> he's back. As I told you, that card is just glued to the field of Joshua Schmidt. Whenever he's playing this format, this card is going to be on his side of the field. Easy peasy. But Thomas actually at least can summon out the Treeborn Frog in attack position. Can beat over tokens, which is a good thing. He could also decide to bring out one of his tribute monsters here, though. Which he yeah. does not decide to. At least not in main phase one. Yeah, but I, but I like to attack with a Treeborn Frog before. Even though Dimensional Prison could hit hard. I mean, it plays around Bottomless Trap a little bit, right? There's Book of Moon onto the Chaos. Oh, book. Yeah, it played around book perfectly. Yeah, I like it. You're right. Oh, and we even drew scapegoats, which is... is wow. He's running scapegoats because you can tribute all of those for uh, uh, Destiny Hero Plasma. Yep, there's Drill Warrior. Hello. Welcome back. He can add back a monster to his hand again. So does he... Does he want to take back the Dunderline again? Or <laughs> what are we going with here? For once, Josh's graveyard looks very well organized. Look, those four cards right next to each other, all spell cards, then the three monsters looking neat and cool. And wow, mm. there's another Kaios, and that's so much damage on the field here. 
and that's this plays around gods the emissary of darkness because these 1000 extra damage will put him into the range of just one attack with the chaos but we have better fader in hand so that is the card you couldn't play around here however there's... you don't necessarily have to yeah there's no way to play around it at all though like yeah. how would you play around it but it's dangerous now versus uh, the Monarch deck because they could just be the enemy controller, which we see in his hand. And, uh, okay, yeah, there is the double Dandelion token. So, he, like, Yoshi is trying to protect himself here by cards like enemy controller, by certain blowout cards. So, I do really like just having that Dandelion play there. And another Monarch like is being played up. Because now you can summon back the Tribon Frog in attack position, which he did not. I mean, he could do that just now. He gets the Coyotes. He will summon back the Tribon Frog in attack position now. And he can. You can still do that. You can summon back the Tribon Frog still in Stemper Phase. Maybe he's thinking about the position. Maybe he just doesn't want to. I mean, why would you tribute the Tribon Frog otherwise? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm. Defense position is so a bit tough. like now oh, you're all Tesselos. What are we going to get? What are we going to get here? This is not dangerous being sniped. This is miracle fusion being sniped, and that's a good hit there. Oh wait, no, it's, there's there's nothing in the graveyard of Joshua that I was is... I was about to say that. Is there even a way to resolve that card? No. It, it isn't, right? We're just checking our graveyard now, and now the Chaos is in the graveyard, which is a thing that I I was thinking about. Like, why would you give it to him as a free resource? True, you can just add it back with Drew Warrior. Yeah, I completely forgot now, about that. You just okay. You don't banish the Battle Fader with Chaos because uh, yeah, you you just half the H, uh, attack of Drew Warrior, attack directly for one thousand two hundred, and then tribute the token Chaos target itself. Yep, that is what indeed is happening, and therefore Joshua Schmidt takes game one of his top four match. And the streamer man himself, the owner of his Twitch channel here, is about to conquer this tournament. He's about to get into the finals. He's only one game away from it, but he still has to overcome that Frog Monarch deck that is sitting in front of him here because that deck can also have some, can have like two really yeah. good games in a row. Let's not underestimate the deck that also made it here into top four. But I think it's a really tough matchup for Pokemon. Um, I think, in general, right now, uh, it's it's a tough, tough competition for Frog Monarch. I was really surprised to see that this was the second most competing deck because Blackwing can always find ways to deal so much damage on those frogs or battle faders that keep lying around on the field. Uh, you are not able to run the mirrors because then your Tribune Frog won't return. So, I I don't really think that it is. I I did not expect this to be the one of the most popular choices. Even though it plays around the mirrors as well. That's that's fair. But in general, did you expect the deck to be so popular? No. Yeah. Right. So you didn't expect it to be so successful. And I mean, there is one in top four now. But I also just did not expect it to be so popular. Seriously. Uh I would just say that the deck wasn't really that successful. I think that Thomas maybe is a really strong pilot, but if you're if this is the second most represented deck and you only have one in the entire top sixteen, then that's. Uh, I mean, maybe if the deck wins the event, then it's it's weird, right? Well, like if if one like there are five hundred players in a one thousand player tournament that are running Frog Monarch and only one gets to top thirty two, and then the player wins, was the deck a good choice or a bad choice for the event? Probably a bad one, I will agree. Probably a bad one. But, I mean, on the other hand, if you compare it to the deck that was most represented in the tournament, which is Blackwing, Blackwing outnumbered Frog Monarchs in top cards only by one, though, because there was two Blackwings yeah. and one uh, Frog Monarch deck in top 16. But it seems like one of them lost in top 16, one of them lost in top 8. So it also doesn't seem too crazy what the most represented deck is putting up here for this tournament. Uh, Tagazog, it was 200 players exactly entering the tournament in round one. We I had 200 players. It's hard to say what the best choice for this event is. I'm For, for this one, I'm going to stick with heroes, actually. I think that heroes 
were a f magnificent choice because you can actually play really well with back row with mirrors. Uh, you have alias, which is a really good answer to most of the cards in the format, just because it has one thousand nine hundred attack points. I'm a big fan of hero blast. Oh yeah. And if you don't play it with diva, you don't have so many weird hands, and you don't have like malicious and stuff like that. This stuff is super bricky. True. So, game number two coming up here of our top four match, and this time we are starting it off with the Swap Frog, so we're not losing like we did last time versus the Chaos, the Shadow Monarch Banish on the Swap Frog. And an immediate pass after adding the Swap Frog back to hand. We also have Substitute in hand, so there is potential for a special summon of Swap Frog next turn. We are just setting monster on the side of Joshua. Is there even a Monarch in the hand of Thomas? I don't think so. Oh, there's, Im there's immediately Ooh. the DD Crow on the Swap Frog. But I mean, we know there is another Swap Frog just coming down now, and that will what? provide us with another Treeborn Frog. So it's not that bad. It's better than just uh, having that hard draw on Treeborn Frog that gets banished by D Crow, because at least now we have another way into it. Yep. And I think the line that you should go for here is special summon out the Swap Frog, exactly activate the effect, and then attack first. Uh, and then activate the Upstart Goblin in hand. I don't know, thin the deck out first, try to get like a Razor or a Caius, and then maybe attack first before you tribute summon, because if you don't fight a Chaos, of course only, uh, because if you only have the Tester loss, you don't want to attack into a Raikou, and you would rather keep the big body for the next turn. Yes, 100%, I do agree. And I mean, it's pretty likely for this to be a Raikou, isn't it? Oh, okay. Oh, but we do have Kaios, so let's just go okay. with the Kaios. That solves all the problems, and now on both sides, we have a Treeborn Frog banished. Gotta say, the Treeborn Frog by Josh looks a lot cooler because it's ultimate rare, but still, both of those cards are doing the same, are fulfilling the same purpose, but right now, they're not fulfilling any purpose anymore because they're both banished. But I think there's a really cool, uh, really rare common print of the uh, Treeborn Frog, or is it... Starfoil, because that was just given out as a Starfoil promo, just like the Starfoil uh, Judgment Dragon. Like, at some Battle Pack tournaments, you would get some of those cards. I see. Oh, and there comes Tesla Lost. We are trying to close this out quickly. And what is being hit here? Oh, it's Chaos. Oh. It is Chaos. 600 damage to the face. Yep, that hurts. Yoshra and going down on life points significantly. Josh actually just it looks like he has no place. He can set a Kai, uh, Raikou now. Ooh. He has a Did trap card, so he really needs to go all out here. A heavy storm would be completely destroying him. I, I saw what the trap card was. That is treacherous trap pole, which is huge. Oh, that is a, that is an insane one. Oh, look, another Kaios. He wants to get rid of the monster, so Raikou is being banished as well. And this would theoretically be game, but as I just said, there is treacherous trap pole which he has to use here, otherwise that game would end right away. And just because they're looking cooler, he goes out of the two Chaos. <laughs> yeah, don't want to give your opponent Chaos. Is there another reason why you would go for a Chaos instead of oh, the... And I mean, there's Astral. also Scapegoat to protect himself. He had many ways to, to stick around here. Yeah. But I mean, I guess you want to preserve some of those in case you top deck a Plasma, which you didn't. It is a Snowman Eater, in fact which is also going to be set. The, the only play that Joshua has done so far in this game, in terms of monsters, is, is just setting monsters. Every single yeah. monster he has brought to the field was either summoning a token or setting it. <laughs> That's quite interesting yeah. and quite fun. And Thomas has just uh, so much steam here. He just oh, keeps some... Oh, soul exchange now for the vanity speed now. Woof. And I think that's a that's a bold one because you can't even attack over these tokens and now he got punished for it really hard. I think that is a debris dragon top deck with Book of Moon in hand. That is the worst possible thing that could have happened to Thomas. What is this? That is actually I mean he what? already had he already had the Book of Moon, but that debris dragon is like really, really, really powerful. That is, that is absolutely insane. And he also has he also has the pot of Everest as the follow-up. So the question is, what do you... Oh, DD Crow! But it doesn't matter. You can still go for a Black Rose Dragon or something like that. The DD Crow coming in here. DD Crow is absolutely massive because you can't get to the Everest now. You, you will oh. be at like 
True. Yeah. It will be four Actually, monsters. Yeah. You're right. It will be four monsters. Yeah. And now you go for the Iron Chain Dragon? Oh, maybe there's something in between that you could go for? No, he does still go for the Black Widows. Because I was yeah. wondering whether there would be a step in between, but then you are lagging a tuner, of course. And now it goes back over to Josh. And I think, uh, yeah, there's double enemy controller and Gorse in the hand of Thomas. And he just passes it over. And this is 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! Just drawing cards for turn, passing it over. And no Vanity's Fiend for turn for Thomas. What a top deck. What a time Joshua, to be alive. Oh my. Joshua picked up Gorse just the turn after. Uh, oh before. Gosh. Yep. Oh, and he now has to set Dandelion, which is, of course, not the card you want to have, but is the card you get, and that will be in the graveyard. At to least be... it enables him uh, the Pot of Everest play now, finally. Yeah. That is the upside. And yes, Neos W, actually, Josh is playing uh, the Plasma. We saw it in his list. So we are shuffling back four cards. Uh, yeah, the Plasma seems crazy. I still wonder if Joshua just wanted to meme with his deck. Or if he actually genuinely thinks that this is the perfect choice because this deck is super random. This is everything is a one off. <laughs> oh, are we picking up? We pick up another pot of average, but oh, also but... the charge of the Light Brigade, which is an out to the Vanity Speed. That is huge when he picks up this year. Unless he normal summons the Raikou. So let's hope that Joshua sees the line of setting the Raikou, the Light Swan Hunter, in face down defense position instead of attacking with it. Okay, he does it. He has it. Don't worry, guys. Oh, but there was Razor being picked up. So he could theoretically yeah. play around it. He decides not to. There's more cards being made. And look oh. at that. We That pot of avarice that we drew there looks a lot better now after milling three monsters with Raikou. Wow. Oh, and we have picked up the Card Trooper as well. We have the Gods, the Mystery of Darkness in hand. Card Trooper is a really dangerous game right here. Because as soon as you normal summon it, and you take two hits, you are not even out. I think you you survive two monarch hits with two hundred life points, and then you can go for the gods. But oh, when we hit Dandelion, of wow. course, of course, and of he course. He has the quick draw synchron in hand, if, hand, if I'm not mistaken. Do you discard the gods here? Do you love Drill Warrior so much that you're actually going for this mad play here? No. Nope. We do do just attack. And Econ to oh. change one token into attack position is absolutely wild. And we are going for the gods. Okay, so he needed to get rid of his enemy controller. The question now I here is, see. does Joshua do anything about this attack position token? I mean, does he? He does have a way to clear it away because there is still the, the uh, yeah. quick draw synchronous hand. But I mean, he also has the card trooper, so that's also a huge liability there. One, two, three, four, five. Easy peasy. Make sure to keep maybe a light monster in graveyard. Exactly. So if you draw the Chaos Sorcerer, you actually have a decent win condition. Yep. Indeed. Thanks for all the love in chat, guys. Appreciate you guys being around. This is a cooperation between so many parties. It is Raiden Trade, Smart Guard, Joshua Schmidt, us as the European Caster Doers from Germany joining as well. We love that project, and we hope that there will be more like that in the future. Oh, Joshua drew into a spell. I cannot tell which one it is, but this is a difficult turn for him now. He doesn't really want to get rid of the gods because, you know, that is the card that will keep him in the game if things go south really quickly. But there is the zero attack point token in attack now. And the worst thing about that, there is another enemy controller in Thomas' hand. The token is at 1,900 as well, that one that Thomas has. So just passing here would be game. Yep, indeed it would be. So Joshua has to come up with something. We are discarding V Debris Dragon for Quick Draw Synchron. Yeah. And I think this is going to be a Drill Warrior. Is there... Anything? Oh, Ooh, no. junk, junk Archer! Are we going to give shoutouts to Farfa? Because this is what the card is doing. This is this is just a Farfa until the end of the next term, I think. Oh, but if it is a no. token, that card no. is never ever going to return yeah. to the field. But this card is going to be destroyed by... Uh, so I think it's just until this end phase then, with the Junk Archer. But uh, yeah, oh, we are going for the Junk Archer. This one can banish the... 
Card Trooper until the end of this turn. It very much looks like game oh. mode. That absolutely yeah. is game. Joshua looks at the top card of his deck, realizing he will not be able to use it anymore. And therefore, Thomas takes this game number two. And with 15 minutes left on the clock, we will be having a third game here in the semifinals. What a match. Wow, it looked like for a small second, like Joshua would come back into this and he would get a hat and card advantage. But the tribute monsters of Thomas made it easy for him. Econs also coming in clutch. And therefore he get that he did manage to clinch this one out. Yeah, Triple Fiend was way too strong. By the way, I see something that I really enjoy reading here in chat. Uh, this actually might get me into Yu-Gi-Oh! again. This format looks like a blast. It absolutely is. So if you didn't know that at most major events like YCSs, maybe even at German Nationals, I cannot confirm that. Don't hold me accountable for this if that's not true. <laughs> uh, you, I think you can check that online at some point. Uh, there are actually events of this Time Wizard format April, I think, 2010. So you can actually participate even in the bigger tournaments with this, and you can you can suck in the atmosphere of those gigantic YCS tournaments while not participating in standard format gameplay, but reliving your loved, your beloved emotions that you had while playing 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, and also, if you have not really played Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively before, this might be your entry into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Because you could start out playing competitive um, 2010 format because it's a little bit slower. It's still very, very strategic, but slower compared to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And then at some point you could transfer into modern Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. Or as so many players do, you could just play both because Joshua yeah. Schmidt is the prime example. This man won a YCS this season and now he's also sitting here in the semifinals about to make finals of uh 2010 time was a tournament as well and he's going to start this game free and he's going to do it with the classic with the t-set pass by the way you know what i'm not looking forward to go ahead joshua re-watching the stream and afterwards roasting us for our opinions on this format that <laughs> <laughs> might be not schmidt approved ah, but, okay. uh, Ch chad you will have to defend us you will have to defend us and tell him how much you enjoyed the stream here yeah Oh, there is Soul Exchange. And a normal summon of what? Wait, you can oh uh, you can trip you can trip oh. the opponent's monster for the effect of Substitute. Holy I did not even realize that, but yeah, Soul Exchange just says you can substitute or substitute a tribute, and that is indeed what happened here. And that is not the most popular use for soul exchange, but it works like a charm here. And we are working through all those frogs of our deck. Holy! We basically filtered through all the frogs. So all of the cards we can draw from now on are monarchs. And all of them are going to be useful monarchs we want to draw. I'm really annoyed that you got the best pun in the entire tournament here. <laughs> that, is, that is not making me happy at all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, th this was an insane first turn. Uh, you basically got rid of all of the bad cards in your deck that you don't want to draw as a follow-up. This is going to be really tough for Joshua to come back because he is having a slower start. He just set a Raikou and passed. I'm curious as to why Thomas decided to set a card afterwards. Uh, maybe he does not have anything Ooh. defensive. Oh, it is Raikou. Oh, of course. But that is a perfect card to chain to that. Scapegoat. Yeah is really not a card you want to hit with Raigeki Break because you just committed two cards into that and your opponent, after having one set card, now has four tokens on the board. Yep, and now it's going to be three after the Treebound Frog attacked over it and now we are attributing for Thestalos. There wasn't a lot from Joshua last turn. There will be a lot less in the next turn unless he top decks into something crazy because he's even oh, using... Oh, it's Vakaius coming there. Oh, boy. Vakaius wouldn't have helped because those... Uh, Scapegoats cannot be tributed for a tribute summon, but we have we have discard Treeborn Frog special summon quick draw synchron, which is absolutely insane. Basti talked about this earlier. Drill Warrior is always in play for Joshua, and it might just as well come here again. Also, there is an option for a Turbo Warrior, which we haven't seen at all today. True. Hey, oh, plus my hand. oh my, oh my goodness. Finally, we talked about this card in game one already. He is on Destiny Hero Plasma and it is on the field now. It is Plasma time and Plasma soaks up that Pestalos. 
And play goes back over to Thomas after, wow, after a T-set pass next to the Plasma. It's Plasma time and he plasmaed all over these guys, but there oh, is boy. enemy controller in I, hand. Yeah. Which is going to stop the plasmaing from happening. So we can actually just summon back the Treeborn Frog if we want to. If it gets banished, who cares? It's three. We can tribute the plasma after a detect, of course. Very smart. Or not. We can just give it back and go for a Kaios. Banish the face down monster. And Joshua is actually getting the treacherous trapple. Is it a Sangan that he wants to pop here plus the Kaios? It's Treeborn Frog. He wants to keep this Treeborn Frog on the field. Of course, it wouldn't help you so much to get rid of the opposing Treeborn Frog. But however, Thomas is not really having anything right now. He's living from top deck to top deck. He has Regeki Break and double swap. There is no defensive cards except for the Regeki Break. And there is no offensive cards. He really needs to top deck Monarch soon because otherwise Joshua is slowly but surely going to take control over this match. Yeah, that is true. I was saying that he early on just pretty much filtered out all the proc cards from his deck so that from now on he can only draw like the powerful Monarch cards, but it doesn't seem like he is picking up those Monarch cards at all. There is Cyber Valley. Mm. Oh, we are purposely banishing our Treeborn Frog here with Cyber Valley just to get the two cards. But I guess that's a pretty good trade. And there is a pass. I was going to 100% go for something like a... Oh, Soul Exchange is not the card you want to see. So, so there are actually... Oh, is he just going to attack into the guards? Is Gods going to come down here? That's just... Yes, Joshua wants to progress his field state so he summons out the guards gets a 1k token which is not the best but good enough to run over a treeborn frog which gets sent back to hand so we want to have the really well played by thomas as well keeping the 1k body on the field so he takes less damage because the token can't just run over it i'm, I'm impressed by both of these guys right now for sure absolutely they are putting on a show here for our top four match of this tournament but is Joshua going to go in here this turn? Because, I mean, it's only 1,000, but combined with the Gorse, that is 3,700 in total. So if we have, like, uh, Heavy Storm plus uh, some good summons, such as Chaos Sorcerer or something, we might already be pretty close to game here. Basti, have you seen the card in hand of wow. Joshua Schmidt, the spell card? It is actually Soul Release. You're going to discard the Swap Frog. Triple Treeborn Frog in the graveyard. Soul Release after this battle phase is going to be slammed down onto the field. And there will be no follow-up in the entire deck for Thomas. Is this the absolute one spell OTK? Or is he just going to pass? I, I, then I don't know what's happening, guys. I mean, I'm going to be honest. If he doesn't use Soul Release now to banish three Treebon Frogs, then I don't know what's happening in this game. But there he is! Soul Release for the absolute blowout! Targeting one Treebon Frog, two Treebon Frogs. Wait, what, one was returned to hand. There's not three Treebon Frogs. The one is in hand, right? I thought he discarded it with uh, Regeki Break. Oh, you're right. Yeah, then he just only had two, I guess. <laughs> All right, we, oh, wow, Thomas picked up Gorse for a turn, which is one of the best cards he could have drawn here in this situation. Oh, tree, <laughs> oh gosh, chat is saying Treebone is at two, oh boy. <laughs> of well, course, Treebone is at two, yeah. Good for you guys, I didn't play the deck <laughs> in this particular format. But thank you, thank you so much. Ooh, but the, as I said, the Gorse was really powerful for uh, Thomas, the... Treeborn Frog, uh, no, no, uh, the, the Bree Dragon for Joshua is also super, super, super strong. And I mean, of course, also, guys, we're live for over nine hours now, so have mercy with us. From time to time, there's going to be a little bit of a slippery, but we're getting back into the action here. And there's Iron Shane Dragon coming down for Joshua, and it is going to be the monster attacking here. Now, Chaos. Oh, Four hundred, and this is going to be the emissary of. Darkness hitting the field with a gigantic token that has 2,400 attack. Joshua really doesn't have much in hand, much on the field. I mean, it kind of is much on the field, but it is one set card. Does he have a good answer to this? 2,400 attack token wants to crash into the Kaios. That is interesting. Yep, we are trading. I mean, oh, he's so low on life points, so this is really, like... I don't know whether I like the crash because that opens us up to a couple of scenarios where our opponent just uh, can sneak out those last 1,100 life points. 
but like that top deck of course was so so insane for yeah. thomas not gonna lie that was one of the best cards probably that could have drawn for turn there there is just a quick draw synchron and a top deck that joshua couldn't do anything with I'm really afraid that my food is gonna arrive when the game hits the ceiling. So Raikou is top deck. What a crazy top deck from Joshua. If there is nothing from Thomas to answer this with, did he top deck something like a Razor or ideally for him a Chaos that oh, you could I think, I think he did thing. he did top deck the Vanity's Fiend! You must be kidding me! He top decked Vanity's Fiend. No battle phase this turn, but of course. The super powerful Floodgate monster that was already so good in game two. And I don't think I see an answer on Joshua's side right now. No, he top decked into the Neos alias. And that is one of the worst cards that you could draw right now. A literal vanilla that has a decent attack stat is not progressing your game here. It is not answering the Majesty's Fiend. And we have oh, Chaos as well. Oh, oh boy. Oh, no. boy. What would Joshua do for a torrential tribute in this situation? But oh, it, we all know it. it's not the it's... Mural Force. But I mean, also Thomas can just actively play into Mural Force here because he saw Treacherous Trap Hole. And Joshua is not going to play Treacherous Trap Hole alongside Mural Force in his deck. <laughs> Let's be real. That is indeed true. Joshua is contemplating. There is nothing like a Mirror Force that could threaten Thomas right here. Book of Moon on to the Vanity's Fiend, on the attack of the Vanity's Fiend, I hope at least. So he is... Oh no, wait. Wait, he didn't attack. He wanted to get the Tragodia out. Can he top deck a level 6 monster? Can he steal the Vanity's Fiend maybe? And then attack with a 1200 attack point Tragodia. Joshua is in desperate need of an answer right here. He, I think he has Debris Dragon, and yep, he has to set that Debris Dragon. Oh, this possible out in Book of Moon for nothing. Vanity's Fiend is a card that has caused trouble for so many players for such a long time. We're getting rid of the Quick Draw Synchro, 500 more attack, and we are changing it to attack position. Thestalos is going for a game. Joshua Schmidt is out in top four, and Thomas advances with his Frog Monarch strategy.